compares an akazo so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. Time itself happened within the context of priesthood. Because priesthood began in the heavens. The technology of altars did not begin among men. They are patterns of the heavens. So when we talk priesthood, we are not going to Old Testament. We are, we are talking about the powers of the endless life. And so in 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 to 2. First Timothy 2 verse 1 and verse 2. I'm talking in this line because we are looking at warring with authors. Paul was teaching his son Timothy. And he said, I exhort therefore that, that first of all supplication prayers intercession and giving on tongues be made for all men for kings first and them that are in authority that we might live a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty so peace and godliness honesty and value systems will be threatened when priesthood is taken so the heritage of God in the territory is contained and kept by the powers of priesthood so God wills it but, but priesthood sustains it if there is no priesthood although God wills it it will never happen it is high level ignorance to say if God wills it, it will happen yes. the heavens belong to God but the earth he has given to the sons of men I give you an instance the Bible said God does not will that any man should, should die or perish he said, but that all men should be saved. But every day men perish. Because if men are saved, we must take responsibility. So everything God wills, by an act of his sovereignty committing it to men, it behoves priest and priesthood to sustain it and so when God created his kingdom he didn't create it for Christians we were called Christians by those who saw us and discovered we look like Jesus you can be a Christian and not have authority in God's kingdom yes. that's why many Christians live like slaves the kingdom of God is for priests and kings Exodus 19 verse 4 to 6 when God brought them out of Egypt when he wanted to really start a kingdom with his children he told Moses his plan for the children of Israel he said they have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings in verse 5 he said, and I brought you unto myself. A peculiar people above all people for the earth is mine. Next verse. He said, and ye shall be unto me 
A kingdom of priests. And a, and a holy nation. Now, if you go to 1 Peter 2 9, I'll stop the reading. Peter right. was reiterating the same emphasis. 1 Peter 2 9 says, It says, But ye are a chosen generation. generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. So what God told Moses. If Even in the New Testament context was still his emphasis. And then if you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Peter told us the people that Jesus bought with him. He said, and he has made us kings and priests unto God. He has made us kings and priests unto God the Father. So if you don't understand and participate in priesthood, you have no place and authority in God's kingdom. This is why priesthood is not just a necessity. It's a must for every believer. Because by it, our essence in God is defined and by it territorial integrity is preserved and so this morning since God's servant has begun to define priesthood and show us the dimensions of priesthood I know he was constrained with time so he showed us the first aspect of priesthood and the last aspect of priesthood he told us that priesthood is to minister to God in intimacy that's the first dimension to it and he said through this intimacy what we draw from God if you're we can now minister to men and to territories. That's the last aspect of priesthood. It's called legislation and litigation. So if, I if I look at a man, if I look at a man, and his destiny is being manipulated by demons, he suffers stagnation and reproach. And I, and I show up with what I've drawn from the Lord. And I arrest that circumstance. So that he can move forward. What I've done is called priesthood. It's legislation and litigation. That means I've, I've, written, I've written a new law over his destiny. And I have judged and halted the previous law that Satan wrote. So I have done priesthood. Because the end product of priesthood is actually kingship. Where we exercise dominion. That's, that's why the endless priesthood is the Melchizedek priesthood. Because that's the only priesthood that combines the order of Aaron and Levi and Judah. So it begins with ministering to the Lord and it ends with ministering to men and to territories. If you don't know this, you can never become the man of God. In ministering to God, you become if you are a if you cover in ministering to men and territories, you fulfill purpose. So, for the purpose of clarity this morning, 
Let me show you the five protocols of priesthood. Then I will show you what it makes out of your life. The first protocol of priesthood is ministering to the Lord. Exodus 28 verse 28. Verse 1, Exodus 28 verse 1. Ukufuma 28 verse 1. It says, separate unto me Aaron. Atimpa tuluila Aaron. And his sons. Naba, naba that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Pa kweba tuenga piungira ine mu office ya wushima pepo. So if you don't minister to the Lord. Nga tumle piungira lesa. You don't understand priesthood. Tamo afika pari wushima pepo. In Acts 13 verse 1 and 2. The Bible was speaking about the church in Antioch. It was a church of priests. He said, now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So, 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 so priesthood is for everybody. In the callings of God, there are five offices that is for some that God chooses. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. That's for everybody. That's for those God chooses and empowers to do it. But, but there are three other offices. That is not just a function of choosing but maturity that everybody must grow into. It's the office of a son, a priest, and a king. Every believer must become a son, a king, and a priest. So this is a reality in the Old Testament. It's also a reality in the New Testament. And you will think it stops there. In Revelation chapter 4. You now see the 20 and 4 elders in heaven. Still ministering to the Lord. That's why it's called the power of the endless life. It is something we will do from earth to eternity. And it will not stop. That's why Revelation 21 said in that city. It's a God will be their light. They will, need, they will not need the sun. So that communion will continue. What does it mean to minister to the Lord? It means two basic things. Number one, it means to pour out adoration to God. When we minister to the Lord through adoration, adoration, adoration manifested as gratitude, honor, reverence, love, and thanksgiving. This is why only spiritual men are priests. This is, this is beyond verses you are quoting. This is you breaking out in God's presence. And just loving on him. Look at the way the 24 elders did it. Revelation chapter 4. The Bible said they fell on their faces. They cast their crowns. And they sang holy, holy, and holy is the Lord. That means you are separate, you are separate, you are separate. You are in your own class. You are in your own class. There's none like you. They went further in Revelation 4.11. things were created for thy pleasure. That means we live for you and nothing has meaning outside you. 
adoration to God. This dude is different from just praying prayer points. He's not more my house rent. Lord, my house rent. Lord, my, my children's school fees. Lord, my health. That is very good. If you feel summa, you can do that. But if that's all you do, you are a prayer warrior. You are not a priest. When a priest stands before God, he ministers to God's needs. What is it that you desire? You desire honor. You desire reverence. You desire thanksgiving. And that's all he pours to the Lord. So when God sees a priest, his heart is satisfied. Because this is the man that can give pleasure to God. You know, we speak a lot about seekers of God. We don't know about the God that seeks men. Jesus said the father is seeking for some particular people yes. like those who worship him in spirit and in truth and Jesus called them true worshippers there are different kinds of worshippers there are superstar worshippers who sing from their gifts to satisfy their own pleasure. But they are true worshippers. Whose focus is to seek the heart of God per time. And worship does not end until God is satisfied. And so such worshippers are not necessarily singers. The first time the word worship was used was Genesis 22 verse 5. Nobody sang there. Nobody sang there. Nobody sang there. Isaac was taken to be slaughtered. Maybe people cried there. So when you find true worshippers, they can approach God. And what they discern in God's heart that time. If you are God, God is looking for reverence. They will cast their crowns. And they will lie on their faces. They may not talk for one hour. They are ministering to the Lord. When true worshippers show up, what they may discern in God's heart is that God wants to be reminded that He is the God of all creation. That is the and the ruler of the universe. And then for one hour they are eulogizing God. Alpha, Alpha Omega. Alpha na Omega. Beginning and end. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. The I am that I am. The God of hosts. The maker of the heavens and the earth. The king of the universe. Support. Support. El Elyon. El Odion. El Nisi. El Nisi. El Shama. El Shama. El Shada. El Shada. And they are just there for one hour. But if you are one hour, we never mention their needs. God is looking for us to be praised. And I gave it. They were carrying the up. They will carry the tambourine and, and sing in their rooms. They are dancing and singing. Malaysia. You know, superstars are anointed when they see crowd. So when they come into a stadium, they are under the anointing. Those are superstars. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. The anointing can come on you there. But if that's the only place the anointing comes from you, you don't know anything about worship. When you become a priest, you can be in your room and have the most rugged worship. Singing and dancing and sweating. Nobody is your audience. 
God is your audience. Elijah said, Elijah did. Before God, whom I stand. Before God, whom I stand. Gabriel said, Gabriel I am Gabriel. Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord. That's the power of priesthood. The capacity to stand in the presence. But the credential to stand in the presence is that you must discern the heart of the Father. And you must align to the rhythms of the heart of God. That's the first requirement of priesthood. Did you not read about Noah? He said, God spoke in his heart. I will no more destroy the earth. And picked it from the heart of God. So the incense that Noah raised to God was a response. If you have not understood the dynamics of the heart of the Father, you may never excel in priesthood. So it's a heart connection. Ability to interpret the rhythms of the Father's heart. With it. Separate unto me Aaron. Aaron and his sons. That they may minister to me. Why is this important? This is what opens the heavens. So that you can ascend to the realms. Because when they did it, when they did it in Acts 13. The the open. and the Holy Ghost said separate unto me because priesthood is a journey from your realm to God's realm because it's from God's realm that you legislate that's why the, the high priest carries the blood from the outer court to the inner court to the holy of holies when it comes before the mercy seat then legislation begins he pours the blood on the altar so God will let you journey but it's as you minister to the Lord that the heavens open he says and I John I'm your brother in tribulation and I was at the Isle of Patmos and I heard a voice as of a trumpet I was in the spirit on the Lord's day he was ministering to the Lord and when he turned he saw seven golden lampstands you can't be separated the realm can open except as you minister to the Lord so the first protocol of priesthood to to minister to the Lord. When you minister to the Lord, then the second protocol is activated. The second protocol is the act of waiting. Because when the realm, when the realm, when the realm opens, you won't just see the king. You have to wait. God is a king spirit. Yeah. We, wait we, wait we wait on him so why ministering to the Lord if you opens the realm and separates you waiting energizes you to participate with God this generation of fast food fast vehicles everything fast increased you jump into the prayer room outline your shopping list and when you finish you run out Lord, remember my uncle remember my daughter remember my yes, that's not for priest priest wait Isaiah 40 31 Isaiah 40 31 they that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength 
shall put wings like the eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk, they shall not faint. You can't journey into the realm if you can't wait. That's why your head is full of noise when you are praying. Because waiting happens when all your attention shifts to God. A waiter in a restaurant has one assignment. To discern what you will say or do. So if you wave, the waiter shows up. Because he there, he is there to attend to you. So if you can't wait, you can't grow in priesthood. Moses climbed Sinai. Sinai, Mount Sinai is over 6,000 feet tall. That's a difficult journey for an old man. But he climbed Sinai. When he ascended the mountain, you think God will be waiting there. It's not God who waits, it's men that wait. And Moses was there. Moses was there for eight days. Before the glory descended. Because he knew the principles. He understood the protocol. If your head is still noisy, it means you have not started waiting. And so and most times, time, what happens to you in the waiting process is that number one, you pray away noise from your head. You pray away the distraction from your mind. When the distraction leaves your mind, you will now start sensing hunger for God. God is summoning you, but it's a still small voice. So, with the earthquake and the wind, you can't hear that voice. So After distraction is gone, then you now sense the hunger. The pool of God. As that pool comes into your spirit, then you ascend into God's realm. And the moment you ascend into God's realm, the glory will arrest you. Then your focus will become God. That's when you start waiting. At that, point, at that point, even if God gives a sign, you will pick it. Because because you will need that sign for your journey. And your empowerment. Most of the prayers I see people pray today is distraction. So there's a lot of prayer but there's no power there's no feedback proud men are trying to show off prayer they are their masters the Bible said the Pharisees pray by street corners long repeated prayers that they be seen of men. He said they have their reward. I'm not saying when you pray all the time, nobody should see you. But I'm saying if the activity outside you is more than the activity inside you, then you are not praying. Because when priests pray, they journey. They need to get feedback from Zion. But we pray in our generation and our biggest reward is sweating. We, we pride ourselves. Meanwhile, nothing happens around us. We the priest of scriptures. When they prayed, laws were changed. When they prayed, territories were delivered. When they prayed, the glory of God manifested. When they prayed, signs and wonders happened. 
How come our prayer now we are the ones singing it and projecting it for people to see? No, but this chapter that I'm about to pray is why No, you are cutting that in the twaimba no kupunda. But we fear to have two two money. What we are doing largely show off is for a citizen. If you have to start to iranga fear, pamunga bu for a seo. If you want to grow, ngamure fo kukula. Put sentiment aside and learn what I'm telling you. La we ni kwe fi abantu bavre mona imwe bi Kenya men so pari resa. Because as you begin to grow, this process will become faster. Ire mo tempo kukula ifinde la nda po fika chinchila. At the earlier stage, it may take you days to be able to minister to God. It may take you weeks to be able to wait. But as you grow, you discover that sometimes in less than five minutes, you have moved from ministering to waiting. And your focus, your focus, your focus is God. You are waiting. You have prayed distraction away. You have responded to hunger and summon. You have moved from the mind to the spirit. Your focus has been arrested. And the third protocol of priesthood is activated. It's called beholding. Beholding. That's when God begins to reveal to you his realm and his dimension. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Jeremiah 33, Jeremiah 3, 33, verse 3. 33, verse 3. 33, verse 3, verse 3. Say, ask of me. I will answer. When I'm done with your questions and your desires, I begin to show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I wonder how people pray and they are still confused. Because what they are doing is not priesthood. It is priesthood you will see and you will hear. Because every priest, every priest that waits, God reveals things to him. That's why 2 Corinthians 3.18 he said we all with open faces. In salvation our faces were open. He said when we come to the Lord the veil was removed. Now the salvation open we behold as in the glass. So if you carry your Bible you will see Jesus there. If you go to your room to pray, you will see Jesus there. If you come into a meeting like this, you will see Jesus. You will see Jesus. Because your focus has come to the Lord. The glory of the Lord we are changed. We are metamorphosed. When you find an arrogant man of prayer, is a prayer warrior, he's not a priest. When you find a proud man of prayer, is a prayer warrior, he's not a priest. When you find a confused man of prayer, is a prayer warrior, he's not a priest. Because the first errand of priesthood is that it transfigures you. And when men, see you, when men see you, both in power and character, you they will see God in you. In his power and in his character. So when God insists on priest, because it's in priesthood that the glory of God is formed in the man. He said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 to 3. Malachi chapter 2 verse 2 to 3. He shall thoroughly purge the sons of Levi. So in priesthood, in priesthood men are poured and transfigured. 
ati muri bushima pepo ba mwane mo ba pele rwano kupiribuka a transfiguration is taking place ero kukupiribulwa then the fourth layer is activated ilio kure chitika nomba ni shule ya pachia konka kwecha une participation in the beloved chile ituo kwe wati ukuwa mpana muri Uh, nensu, our, our, fellowship, our fellowship is not just among men on earth. Make no mistakes about it. You know, when Jesus died for us, he opened the gate of participation. He's one of the blessings of the Spirit. Ephesians 1 verse 3 he gave us all spiritual blessings in the heaven. Ephesians 1 verse 3 acha tupere ama paro yo sa mumpashi.